Hi everyone. So we're starting a new uh, subtopic now in our uh, second topic, which is discussing atoms, uh, ions, periodic table, and so on. In this particular subtopic, we're going to talk specifically about atoms, some specific terms associated with atoms, uh, ions, what they are, and so on, and then molecules. These are going to be fairly introductory concepts about each of these terms. We're going to talk a lot more about them at the end of the semester, near the end of semester, when we talk about you know more advanced theory about uh, atoms and molecules. But right now, we're just going to introduce some of these concepts. So I'm going to start with just talking about atoms and ions. First off, before we uh, start with that, you just want to give you a an, you know a continuation from our prior topic, which was talking about the nuclear atom. Remember, so currently the way we view the atom is is the following. The atom is, is really composed of this um, cloud of electron, and I'll show you an animation real quick from here to kind of indicate that, you know, the view of this is that the atom, the electron is moving really uh, fast, and as a result, sort of like um, uh, usually represented as a cloud here. Um, and then within it, you have a nucleus, which is composed of the protons and, elect uh, and neutrons, okay? So electrons are like clouds, lots of lots of empty spaces in between the electrons. The sizes of the uh, nucleus would, uh, compared to the size of the atom is shown here in terms of diameter. So if you think about diameter of, uh, of the nucleus, it's about, you know, uh, 100,000 times less than the diameter of the atom if you compare the sizes of these two numbers here. Okay, so that's something to kind of think about. Now, uh, one one of the issues, of course, about having a lot of empty space is that you know you might ask this question. Well, if if you you know hit a, a table, right, or a desk or a wall, you know that you you know if you hit it hard, your hand is going to hurt, right? So clearly, that you know wall or desk or table is composed of fair you know very solid substances. But how can that be if we have um, all the, you know, the atoms which make up this desk, this wall, and this table is mainly empty space, okay? So you might want to think about that a little bit. Um, you know, we'll, when we meet in class, we might use this as a discussion question. Talk about why, why exactly do things feel solid even though they're composed of atoms which has mostly empty spaces. So just going back to the nucleus and the uh, atom comparison, there's kind of two ways to represent this here. One is that you notice this guy is holding a little uh, uh, ball here, a steel ball. It's very small, right, because he was holding it with this, his fingers. But if the nucleus is the size of that ball, the atom is basically the size of this whole stadium behind this guy. Okay, so it's quite amazing the, the difference in size between the nucleus and the atom. Same thing here, if you have a baseball versus a grain of rice, that's basically the difference uh, in terms of the sizes of the nucleus versus the uh, atom. Okay, so something to think about, the nucleus is really small in terms of volume, okay, but all the mass is condensed within that small volume, so the nucleus is very dense, okay? All right, so let's think about this real quick here. Um, people have done more uh, experiments with the these three subatomic particles. We call them subatomic particles because they're smaller than the atom. Um, and you can see here that the electron, uh, proton and neutron are the particles. The masses are given here and as you can see that the proton and the neutron uh, have basically the same mass. They have slightly different masses but for all intents and purposes they have the same mass Okay, for our discussion. So the proton and the neutron uh, you know, have, have, this, have the same mass, but you can see that both of these numbers are quite a bit higher than the electron. So in other words, the protons and neutrons both are much heavier than the electron. But the charge, on the other hand, is a different situation. The proton has a charge of uh, what we call plus one. So that plus one really represents this quantity here, 1.6 times 10 to the minus 19. Coulomb. So remember that Coulomb is a unit of charge. So the proton, if I want to actually, you know, de de uh, define what the charge is in the SI unit, I would say it's 1.6 times 10 to the minus 19 Coulomb. However, just for simplicity, people a lot of times would say that this number is equal to plus one. Okay. 
Now, the electron, it turns out, has exactly the same charge, except that it was the opposite uh, charge, which is a negative charge. So the electron has a charge of negative 1.6 times 10 to the minus 19, so we just call it negative 1. In other words, a proton and electron have exactly uh, the same amount of charge, uh, so they balance out each other, but notice that the mass of the proton is a lot higher than the mass of the electron. The neutron has no charge, okay, so it's just neutral, and these both are located in the nucleus. So let's, uh, you know, kind of summarize a little bit, uh, talk a little bit about some of the other terms associated with the atoms. Uh, so the atoms has protons and neutrons, they're in the nucleus, and they have electrons, right? Now, every element that you'll see, we'll talk about the periodic table in the next topic, but every element has a unique number of protons, okay? So you can then distinguish what element you have by just counting the number of protons. Each, you know, if uh, an element has a proton of, uh, number of proton equals eight, that's one type of element, that's oxygen, by the way, and then if it has um, proton equals nine, then it's a different element, can't be the same element anymore, so nine would be fluorine. So this uh, number of electron, a number of proton, I should say, is like the identification number for the element, and it's called the atomic number, which has a symbol A. Now, the mass of the atom, uh, since the atom is composed of all these three particles, is, you know, the mass should be the sum of all of these masses, right, and depending on how many you have of each. So if you have 10 protons, 10 neutrons, and 10 electrons, then the mass would just be the sum of 10 mass of 10 protons plus mass of 10 neutrons plus mass of 10 electrons. But as you can see in this numbers right here, the electron is a lot lighter than the protons or the neutrons. So as a result, a lot of time when we represent what we call the mass number, okay, the mass number of the uh, atom, we usually don't use, um, we kind of disregard the electron and we just say that the mass of an atom, which this is usually called a mass number, just to make it clear here, the mass number of an atom, and the mass number has the symbol, symbol Z, just to be clear here, the mass number of an atom is um, equal to just the mass of the number, all the protons you have plus the neutrons you have, okay? So, just make it clear here, mass of all protons and neutrons. So, if you have 10 protons and 11 neutrons, you're going you're gonna to add all of those masses together, and that's going to give you the mass number. Um, so, that's, you know, how you can uh, ignore usually the mass of the electron, because the electron's mass is just so uh, small in comparison to the mass of the uh, protons and neutrons. Now, we have an interesting case here, which is uh, isotopes. Uh, during Dalton's time, he didn't realize that isotopes ex exist, so when he proposed his atomic theory, he just said that the elements with the same masses are going to have, you know, uh, all the elements of the same type will have the same masses, but it turns out that later on people found that you can have atoms of the same element that have a different number of neutrons, okay? So in other words, they have, let's say, the same. Num they have the same number of uh, protons because that's their uh, identification number. But it turns out that they can have different number of neutrons in the nucleus. So, for example, let me just give you an, uh, sodium here as an example. Sodium, the sodium element always has eleven protons, right? So, in order for something to be called sodium, it has to have eleven protons. But it turns out that we find that there, uh, sodium with eleven neutrons and there's sodium with 12 neutrons. So we call them different names. The one with 11 neutrons is called sodium-22 isotope. The reason it's called 22 is because you're adding the mass of the 11 protons and the 11 neutrons. So the 11 plus 11 is 22. The one with 12 neutrons is called sodium-23 for the same reason, because now you have 12 neutrons plus 11 protons. That gives you 23. Okay, so the isotope is indicated by the mass number, and the mass number, remember, is just the mass of all the protons and neutrons added together. So you have 11 protons, 12 neutrons will be 23, 11 and 11 will be 22, all right? 